Right, guys, welcome to episode one of the Par 4 podcast hosted by Golf Magic. We're going to bring you everything golf-related from shanks, tour news, and much, much more with a wonderful quad of golfers. I've got myself, Will, Johnny, and Andy. We're going to go through and just introduce ourselves, and I'm going to go with our token 28 handicapper first. Willie Woods, talk to us. <laughs> Well, thank you, Alex. Well, I would say I'm a token, but after I played last weekend, I'm basically an 18 handicapper now. Let's let's call it that. <laughs> what do you shoot? Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm uh, the photographer. I'm talking for golf magic. Um, yes, as Alex rightly said, I'm the token handy high handicapper at golf magic. Um, yeah, and I played very very well last weekend. I've got to say, I've never played that well before in my life. Uh, we would disregard the back nine. Let's just focus on the front nine. And then we're all, all good to go. Um, but yeah, that's that's me in a nutshell, really. Good no, stuff. The front, nine will be, uh, the front nine will be in, in, in everyone's memories for a while. I can tell you that. It was absolutely incredible. <laughs> we're going to move on to Johnny, the equipment man, alongside myself. How are you doing? Right. Well, I have 12.2 handicapper currently trying to get down single figures this year, but I am the uh, reviews editor. So I do all of Alex's written work and also deals, posts, buyers, guides, uh, everything equipment and a little bit of tour when needed. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been at Golf Magic for almost a year now. So coming up to my uh, year birthday, which is uh, very exciting. Not quite the 13 years of uh, Mr. Roberts down there, but still not a bad stint. Um, but yeah, that's just me in a nutshell. Good stuff. I'd also like to say that um, Johnny has another handicap, which is the inability to stay in a bath for the correct amount of time. But we will get to that in a separate podcast. Uh, last but not least, we will go to Andy, our four news veteran who knows everything from the time Scotty Scheffler wakes up to the time Tiger Woods will withdraw in the Masters this week. Andy, talk to us about your wonderful time at Golf Magic and what you think about golf in general. Boys, how we doing? Um, yeah, so Andy, the editor of Golf Magic, uh, been here officially this week, 13 years. Um, so thank you very much. Still still awaiting the uh, the uh, birthday cake and everything, but uh, I'm sure that'll happen. Um, yeah, it's uh, I used to play off six. Um, now I play off about 26, if I'm honest. So I'm probably the worst golfer. Actually. Join me. Yeah, we'll probably have a good game soon. I'm, I'm, I'm a fair weather golfer, let's put it that way. Um, so oh, we all. can play a bit more. Well, now the sun's coming out. Um, but yeah, really excited for this week, boys. It's, um, this is this is the mm. week that really gets the juices flowing. A lot of people get the clubs out of the garage, uh, a bit like myself, uh, and get out there and play. So um, yeah, really looking forward to it and, and getting stuck into it. Yeah. Absolutely. I think, Andy, what you may lack in some sort of uh, a golf skill at the moment, you make up for in pure <laughs> knowledge of the, the PGA Tour Live Golf and much, much more. Um, I'll quickly introduce myself. I'm the equipment editor at Golf Magic. Playoff five, I will be of scratch at the end of this year or else I am stopping it and playing something like bowling for the foreseeable future. <laughs> it's rather embarrassing. But we're not going to talk about that too much today. We're going to really just preview the Masters and what we think is in store for all the golfers alike. What we have done, what we're going to intro to begin with is we're going to give ourselves a hypothetical £50, a lot of money for all of us in this call, and we're going to use that to bet on three golfers. So we've done a little bit of research. I think, Andy, because you are our veteran, you have a lot, even too much knowledge on the golf scene. I'm going to head over to you first. I'm going to ask what your three picks are and mm -hmm. how are you going to split up your hypothetical £50? Okay, cool. Uh, well, my main pick... Um, and I've never been more confident that someone's going to win the Masters. I'm going to put it that way. I would, I would have eighty percent of that fifty quid. I put, I'd be putting forty quid on Scheffler. Uh, I can, I can, um, I can sub, put substantially more on that. Uh, three weeks ago, uh, uh, I've got eight to one. <laughs> uh, he's now down to four to one. I backed him during uh, just before he won at Bay Hill, where he successfully defended there. He then obviously went on to become the first player in the 50-year history of the Players' Championship to defend at Sawgrass. Um, he should have won in Houston a couple of weeks ago. Uh, would have been his first win in the state of his home state of Texas. He was going to become the first player to win three straight events since Dustin in 2017. Wasn't quite to be. Came up one shot, one shot shy. With all due respect, 
you know, to Steven Jaeger. Scheffler kind of threw that one away. He probably had his B minus game out there. But look, he still finished second, one behind. I think that says everything about his game. Even when he doesn't play well, he's there or thereabouts. Um, four to one is very skinny right now. Uh, I'm thankful I got the eight to one a few weeks ago. But yeah, as a main pick, I'm very confident. I think now he's sorted out his putting, or, or we we like to think it's got. You know, he's 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 in the sort of middle of the pack for putting now, strokes game putting. Mm. I think that's all he's going to need to do this week. Um, and yeah, I think Scotty Sheff is going to win his second green jacket in three years. You, um, are you not worried about that putting? About just because the Masters, the greens there are so penal, like with the with the slopes, the undulation, them running at forty and the yeah. stem. Are you not? Worried that this is going to really expose his putting even more than, let's say, that we've seen over the last last tournament or so. Yeah, well, I think at Houston Open, um, which did play very similar to Augusta, just in terms of how it was set up, the lack of rough, everything. I think it was a good. That was actually a good test for him. Um, he putted okay. Obviously, had that blip on the Friday night where he three putted from five feet. Blamed a sp- spike mark on that missed one footer. He didn't miss a putt inside of seven feet on the weekend until that final hole where he missed the five footer that would have got him in the playoff. I think he hit a good putt, just you know, just just broke left. Um, he finished seventy second out of eighty three in strokes game putting that final round. So I do take your point there. He's going to need to brush that up, and if he puts anywhere near that level, no, he won't win the Masters. Um, but I just think collectively of what I've seen over the last three to four weeks, going to the Spider Tour X, coming away from the blade. I don't know why he didn't do that. Over a year ago, you know, he's, these these problems have been going on for a long time. He just looks more more comfortable for me. Um, and I, as I say, I think if he puts averagely, he'll win by a couple of shots. I think if he if he has a hot putting week, I think he'll absolutely run away with it. I think you could be looking at a four or five shot win. Um, I was about to say, yeah, I'm, I'm I saw, um, to win. Yeah, I saw uh, Brandel Chambly say if he plays okay, he could win by eight to ten. Do you think that number's in well, play at all? Uh, I think if he was top five in putting or something like that this week, then, then yeah, every chance. But I mean, the guy leads every stat, you know, the main stats, you know, yeah. strokes gain total, he's leading strokes gain approach to green, birdie percentage, uh, scoring average. I mean, you could go on. Uh, he's in the top five. Yeah, dare I, dare I say Tiger-esque stats. coming into yeah. the Masters? Or? Yeah, well, I think it's interesting because we're having this oh, conversation okay. today, weren't we? Just, is he, is he yeah. the best player since Tiger Woods? And I think you've, Right now, you've probably got to say he is just in terms of stats and everything. I think McElroy was probably the best since since Tiger. You can throw Jordan Spieth in there. Just Dustin Johnson's had a period. Jason Day had a period where he looked unbeatable. But I think Scheffler's been doing it. And he should have won six or seven times last week, last season, let's be honest. I mean, he absolutely threw tournaments away just from putting like Happy Gilmore. It was ridiculous. But... Um, yeah, I just think he he just looks in a, a right right frame. He's got the beard back this week as well, which I like. I think you know Scotty with the beard is unbeatable. Um, and uh, yeah, no, eight to one. I'm I'm very happy with with that that price I got three weeks ago. So yeah, I'll have the forty pound of the fifty on on Sheffler if that's all right. Absolutely. Um, I will then put a ten pounds. No, sorry, because that that doesn't leave me with a third pick. I will have. <laughs> yeah, can you add, uh, mate? <laughs> I will do. I will do seven pound fifty on uh, Xander Schauffele, uh as my second pick. Um, Twenty to one, he was a couple of days ago. I think he's been slashed into fourteen to one already. And yeah, he he is he is a player to me who he gets a lot of stick on social media, um, and possibly rightly so in the big the big tournaments you know he's, he's had multiple opportunities to win majors uh at the open he had a chance at the masters in 2021 he, he was right on the hills of matsuyama put it in the water on 16 um he probably should have won the players championship a couple of weeks ago um scheffler chased him down there but this guy you know he's had 17 top 10 finishes since his last win at the genesis scottish open which was just before the 150th open in in 2022 um he's had six top 10s this season, well, in his last eight events, I think, I think four of those have been top fives. To me, he is the, it's big, it's a big call, but I think he's the second best player in the world right now. I know he's world number five, but I just think consistently, I think he's a very solid golfer. And I think if he can just win one of these big ones, I think it really could open the floodgates for um, a lot of success for him. He's an Olympic gold champion. Not that that means a lot these days, but um, he's a seven time winner on tour. Um, I feel he's due a big tournament and I just think Scheffler for me is 
by far and away the best player in the world right now. But I would have Xander Schofle hot on his heels. And I think 20 to 1 that was available a couple of days ago, uh, which I did <coughs> which I did get, um, is is a pretty um is a pretty decent is is good value at least anyway, I think. And he and he likes the course. So um yeah. Seven pound fifty on Schofle. And then just my third pick, we have a wild card pick. Um 65 to 1, I think you can get on uh, with one uh, bookmaker yeah. right now, is a player who finished second on his Masters debut last season, which I think says a lot. Um, yeah. He has the, he probably won't like the record that he's got, but he's got seven runner up finishes on the PGA Tour, which is a record, I think, uh, over the last 40 years. I think it was match, I think David Duval did it in 96, 97. Uh, but Cameron Young, to me, is a player who is definitely due a big tournament. He should have won the Valspar, what was it, two, three weeks ago. Peter Malnati yeah. came in there and won that. All right, he got a pretty lucky break, Malnati, on that. Was it the 16th in the rough? Um, but similar to Schofield, I think, obviously, Schofield is a seven-time winner. Cameron Young hasn't won anything yet. Um, but I think when he does win, I think he's I think he's a very talented player. I think he proved his you know uh, his class in the, the Open. You know, going close to Cam Smith at St Andrews, nearly won the US PGA. As I say, he's had seven runner-up finishes all within the last couple of years. Um, yeah, I think sixty-five to my... one anyway. Looking at the prices, stands out to me. Yeah, is that is is it? Is Cam um, Young, if he wins, have I got to wear the Man U shirt? Is that the Man U bet we're doing? Yeah, I mean, we we can do. That. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we could have a little side bet here. Wow. I think that's quite good. Yeah, because I I yeah yeah I'll, I'll, if, okay, that's fair. I've changed mine. Yeah, well, virtual shape there, on it. That's. Yeah, you got to wear a United. The stats shirt. are in favour of Cam Young, which yeah. I'll get onto. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's some good. That's Man's good odds. Good odds. odds. Pretty good odds. Yeah. So I think we need a virtual you... handshake, gents. Virtual handshake. Virtual handshake. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, a yeah, good. That's a right <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's here for me. <laughs> no, he's down right. He's down <laughs> here. <laughs> Three very strong picks, though, Andy. I think they're um, they could do very well. To yeah, your, uh, no, I respect that. Fifty pounds back. Um, Will, I'm going to go to you to see how much research you've uh, dove into and how ridiculous your picks would be, judging by your grin. I imagine we're okay. going to... Well, to be fair, we all know what one of them's going to be, but I'm going to class that as my wild card, which we'll get to. It's very wild. Um, I, you know what, I kind of, I went, I was going across all different types of picks and I kind of was thinking, let's be realistic about it rather than just do silly ones. Um, so I'm actually, my top pick is, I've got to say Rory. Um I think it's time for him to finally pick up the jacket, right? Mm -hmm. He has had a very wish-washy up and down start to the season. He always gets in his own head, as we know. But finishing the way he did on Sunday, um, absolutely clutch performance uh, to finish with a 66 uh, and come third. I think that's given him a lot of confidence going into the Masters. Uh, so let's just hope that with obviously this new swing that he's been getting from Butch, uh, which I think has been playing off quite well, Hopefully, going into the Masters in Augusta, fingers crossed. It's maybe maybe that's uh this is his time. So I'm going to say I think at the moment he's ten to one, Rory. Mm -hmm. Um, which I've I'm going to put my a lot of my nest egg on that. So thirty pounds on Rory to win. I reckon. Who knows? I think it's. I mean, it's, it feels like something that's been looming over his head for a while. This Masters tournament, and I think it's it's time for him to really don the jacket. Um, my second pick, um, it's clearly the favourite, Scotty. Um, some excellent points, Andy, you brought up. He's obviously won the Arnold, won the players, and then came second at the Houston. Um, I reckon he's probably got a very good chance to, to, to don the jacket again, to shuffle shuffle his way back in there. Uh, so I think £10 on that, 4-1. to one. I didn't want to put too much on it, so who knows. So that, I think, I think yes, yeah, Scotty's probably got a good, a good chance. And my wild card, I think we all know who that's going to be. <laughs> I've got, I've got to back my boy. Forty to one, yeah. forty to one. He's forty. Right. He's forty-five. He's forty-five. Uh, it, oh, is he? Yeah, oh, when I checked, he's forty to one. Christ, I should, def I should definitely. This virtual, this virtual fake bet is definitely getting placed then. <laughs> <laughs> um, but looking at his last Masters performances, I think yeah, in twenty twenty two became fifth. Uh, last year he came temp, so he, he's up there with the top tens. Um, I reckon if Colin doesn't do it this year, I, I he will still be up there within the top ten. I think uh, he obviously knows the course. 
He's a fantastic player. Again, he's had a bit of a weird start to the season. Um, but I mean, I just, I love the guy. So I'd love to, <laughs> love for him to do really well. <laughs> and I, I honest, I guarantee you now, he will be in the top 10. I'm just, that's it. That's what I'm saying. So even if he doesn't win, title, he's up there. Yeah. He's up there with the rest of them. Okay. Yeah. That's the title of this yeah. podcast right there. Guaranteeing Morikawa in the top 10. Exactly. Bold. Bold. But it's the it's, um, that's what the wild card picks for. Absolutely. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's the Willie Woods guarantee, mate. We need a pick based on that. Go hard, go hard. That's good. <laughs> uh, Johnny, I hope your uh, picks are somewhat more research based into them rather than just a vibe of, of Mr. Morikawa. Let's find out. <laughs> I'm the vibe. Uh, what are yeah, you yeah, what are you afraid? <laughs> I was I was uh, potentially going to lean into the vibes only picks, but then after doing a little bit of homework, my uh, my head got turned. Um, pretty boring, but I'm going to go Scheffler. Obviously, as my main man, I think if you don't pick him, it's a bit of a mug's move. Um, yeah. One stat that actually stood out to me, obviously Andy mentioned his kind of strokes gained driving, all this kind of stuff. He's also fifth um, in strokes gained around the green, which I think at Augusta mm-hmm. is going to pay uh, pay dividends. I mean, it's a second shot course, obviously, but if you're going to miss the green, if you can get up and down, um, that is kind of the key to key to keeping your scores low. And I think, yeah, as Andy said, if he has a good week putting, he could, um, yeah, he could comfortably win by between five to ten shots. I'm going to going to lump in with Brandel Chamblay on that one. Um, so that is where I'm actually going to not go 30. I'm going to go 20 on Scheffler. Um, just because the odds aren't that great, I'm going to spread my bets a little bit, see if I can get yeah. a bit of value from my uh, from my bets. Number two, I'm <laughs> sticking uh, with who I've been backing. I'm going to go Ludwig Orbeer, or however you pronounce his, uh, mm-hmm. pronounce his yeah. surname. Master's uh, debut as well. Yeah, oh, Master's yeah. debut. Yeah. hasn't been done on debut since Fuzzy Zeller, I don't think. I believe it's the stat. Um, mm-hmm. But he's a 20 to 1. He's a man that lives for the moment, uh, as he proves in the Ryder Cup. And as he's already proven on the DP World Tour and PGA Tour, one on both. Um, tough for a rookie to win. Um, but he doesn't really seem to get phased by the big occasion. He's got a very kind of calm disposition, yeah. which I think will hold him in good stead. I, I was listening, I was uh, doing, reading a Twitter Q&A with uh, like Michael Kim, and he said that the thing that really gets rookies is it's kind of like you're playing for the first time in a tournament that you've dreamt about playing your whole life. And that can just completely spook people. But fingers crossed that doesn't happen mm-hmm. big. Um, yeah, T to green, 15th strokes gained on the PGA Tour, 26th approach. Um, putting 77th, which isn't great, and 109th around, which could potentially be a bit of an issue. Um, but I'm hoping he's just not going to miss a fairway, not going to miss a green. So that is where um, nice. I'm going to put 15 pounds of my bet. And the final 15 pounds, which I think is potentially the best bet, um, and it's kind of he's not his odds aren't quite as good as Cam Young. I think that's quite a savvy. Is this the Arsenal shirt? Of, um, so this is the Arsenal this shirt. Is the Arsenal this is the Arsenal wild card, yeah. Okay. So I, card. Card. despite okay. despite my love for Sung Jm, he hasn't made it into my final three, wow. and I'm actually lumping in fifth, oh. another fifteen with uh, Sahith wow. Pigala. Um, Thirty-three to one on Paddy Power. Um, came ninth last year which is very respectable, obviously. So he's not a rookie anymore. He's kind of been sneaky consistent this year. Uh, four top tens, good performance of the players where he finished T9. Arnold Palmer has finished T6. Um, and he doesn't, I was looking at his strokes gain stats last night. He doesn't really have like a big weakness. Uh, fifth best strokes gain total. 14th best strokes gained off the T. 13th best putting. He's already won on the PGA Tour. Knows how to get it done popular character so i'm thinking the fans are going to get behind him um and i just love the guy he's a, he's, he's a friendly fella good eyebrows good smile um so yeah he's my kind of outside <laughs> good beard. Good beard. my outside <laughs> bet for, uh, out for, for the masters yes yeah, so i'm putting 15 him 15 aberg 20 scheffler i rate i rate your uh rogue slash wild card I, I like that he's a lovely lovely bloke really wholesome he's a um, and an incredible player so yeah, i'd, I'd, I'd well. back that he's playing well great man. eyebrows yeah Great, oh, very well. Lots of stats to back that. So, I'll be honest. I was pretty much headless chicken a little bit until about two days ago before I um, delved onto a uh, statistic on one of those wonderful threads on Twitter, which was um, the was it the twelve of the last twelve Masters winners on the last four tournaments they've played up to the Masters have all been twenty gaining twenty strokes tee to green. Uh, obviously, a cumulative of those four tournaments. 
every single uh, winner from the last 12 Masters. And so someone's picked all of the players that have been gaining 20 strokes to a tee degree in accumulatively of the last four tournaments. And there he is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine players that it essentially could be. Uh, I'll be, I won't spoil it all for you. I'll let you guys and people watching go and look it up for yourself. But it's not the most interesting list, which is why the odds are so dreadful for the Masters this year. Um, but it does, all signs do point to uh, Mr. Scotty Scheffler, which is why I am putting, not, not a healthy amount, but I'm going to be putting uh, £20 on it. Just because I think that'll make my money back. Because as, as we've all said, I think he is going to win unless uh, something weird happens. Unfortunately, I don't... I'm not really too excited about um, this happening because I don't think Scotty has that amazing of an aura. But we'll find out. Hopefully, he's re- hopefully he's cool this week. But that's why I'm only doing twenty pounds because I don't want to go too heavy on him. And then I'm going to put this is weird. Then for my second pick, I'm going to only put ten pounds because I'm saving twenty pounds my wild card. But I'm putting ten pounds on Hideki Matsuyama just because he's in unbelievable mm-hmm. form. He's been quite quiet. I think a little bit of a dark mm-hmm. horse. People don't really yeah. think oh he's won already at the Masters. He is it's one of his favourite places and mm-hmm. has been up there for the last previous tournaments. He is obviously so good tee to green. He does the weird yeah. thing where he thinks he's a bad shot and it goes to 10 foot. I think I need to back him because I think I'm almost thinking of players that will win if Scotty doesn't perform. I think Hideki can easily be up there. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. The, the weather's very good as well, yeah. so I don't, I'm not really focusing on that. But that'll be my, again, rather conservative mm-hmm. Obviously, Scotty's what, about four to one right now. Hideki's twenty to one. My last pick. Let me just get my odds up just to make sure. Remember, my last pick That's is the it's it's certainly wild, mate. Eighty to one. Eighty. Thank you very much. Eighty. 80 I'll say that one more time for you. Eighty. Wow. Eight zero. And this wow. man, a Canadian man, is um, I think might impress a few people because his name topped upon this leaderboard of strokes gained tee to, gain, tee to green. Corey Connors, a natural drawer of the golf mm. ball. He has been doing very well for, I mean, the last year. And I think he could. I don't, this is the weird thing. I don't think he'll win, which is why I've done at £10 each top way. 10. Because, yeah, because I think I can get some, okay. de- I can get decent wedge back if he does place in the top 8, 10, 12, or whatever. Yeah. But just someone who's okay. a natural drawer of the golf ball, especially they've moved the tee back 10 yards on two which makes anyone who wants to fade the golf ball, well, you have to draw it off that tee. The bunker is now in play. I think it's really, really important now to be able to naturally hit that shot shape. Obviously, Corey has that down to a tee. So I found him at AC1 on Skybet. That's who I'm going with. Obviously, we talked about it quite a lot for the last few weeks, and I think the most interesting thing I can note from our four picks is um, where's the where's the live golfers? Hmm. Guys, there's none there, right? I'm so, I, I'm shocked because I I thought you were really back in Brooks, Alex. I thought you were like, oh my god, Brooks, yeah, he's amazing, yeah. he's in great form. Blah, blah, blah. Well, not so much great form, but <laughs> I thought you were going to back him, especially with our conversation we had last week. And then you just got a whole U turn, and I've, out of the blue, I've gone research, you mate. bleed Can- Canada. Didn't he kind of shit the bed? I'm sorry. Yeah, he's, he's he just. Did. He's just not good odds. He's 20 to 1 now. He mm. shot 77, 77, as Andy, were you talking about yesterday. Don't think it's mm. good enough. But I think the one thing we struggle with with live golfers is to see their stats. I know there's data golf behind it, yeah. but I can't necessarily see yeah. how well mm. he's playing apart from his actual form going into it, which, let's be honest, isn't that good. Yeah. Cool. I'll, I'll also be honest, mm. I have still put 20 pounds on him, not hypothetically, I've put 20 pounds on him just because. Did it last week after a few beers, okay. and he's going to win. But I don't actually think... So, so that's always the way, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's how, how it works. But I don't trust him <laughs> enough to beat the likes of Scotty Scheffler and people and people like that. Mm. I mean, I am quite interested that mm. none of us mentioned Rahm at all. Is there any reasons why? Yeah, I. for me, I, I just think with Rahm, it's... I've been pretty disappointed from what I've seen from him. And, and maybe... Maybe we shouldn't be that way. I think we just have such high expectations of him. And like when we were looking at the live events, was he 14 live events? I was thinking, how many is he, how many is he going to win this season? I was thinking, look, he, he'd probably win a quarter or a third of the events. And he looked, he might still come good the rest of the live season. But he's played five events. He hasn't won yet, which I think is pretty poor, really. When you think he is the mm-hmm. star man, he's the reported 600 million, you know, dollar mm-hmm. star boy. And all right, he's had five consecutive top tens. It's not as if he's shanking it left, right, and centre. 
but he he should be winning these these tournaments. Let's be honest. At the end of the day, yeah. for me, he's only really got to beat five or six guys, really, like the, yeah. the, the big names. Um, you know, but I'd throw other players into it, like you said, with Kepka. Just Kepka's not really done it. At the same time, can he be asked? Is is he he gets himself up for the majors? That's all he really cares about. So I think this will be the big mm-hmm. test this week to see. And these guys are going to want to prove themselves and really stick it to the PJ Tour this week because they've obviously had, you know, a lot of a lot of blowback and stuff this season <clears throat> about do they really care? Do they want to dig it out of the dirt and all of that? Well, let's see. This this will be the week they've had. A lot of time off this season to supposedly this was a reason this was a lure to go and join live because they wanted a bit of time with the family to just kind of have a bit more chill time to concentrate on the majors. Let's see it this week. Mm-hmm. This will be the big test. You know, we all think yeah. Scheffler is by far and away the best player in the world. You know, maybe well, let's see if John Ron turns up this week, it could be a very, very exciting Masters. He obviously won last season. It's very difficult to defend. Was it Tigers the last player to defend? In yeah, oh two was it or yeah mm-hmm. something like that? It's small it's club, easy. Um, people. Yeah, um, Dustin Johnson. You know, obviously he's won the Masters before. <sighs> Again, what's he really done this season? I know he won one uh, live event in Las Vegas, but aside from that, I don't think he's really been contending too yeah. much. Uh, Cam Smith, I think he was runner up in Hong Kong recently. Obviously, great. Masters records has come close in the past, but withdrew last week through illness. That's probably yeah. scuppered his mm-hmm. preparation this week, so I'd rule him out. Uh, who else is there? Bryson, um, obviously past famous as well. Last as a past sixty-seven, uh, he obviously he obviously <laughs> fancies his chances to come out and say something like that. Um, Bubba Watson, Bubba Watson's won twice. But, yeah, I mean, Bubba, where's he been? Not really now, is he? I think so, he's come towards the end of his career. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, and I was. Yeah, I think what two two season wins, isn't he? Uh, he's not got a great record mm. at the Masters, which is anything that would sort of swerve me away from him. I think he's twenty eight to one, which does yeah, it's good each way value. He's in form. Um, yeah. I think he's had a miss. I think that's the Masters, though. Like you never, you never really know what's going to happen. I mean, last year yeah. that amateur, um, Sam Bennett. Like mm-hmm. that was that was incredible. Like he was up there going out on the last day with the big boys, and that's like that's huge for an amateur to do that. Yeah. So that's the thing with with Augusta with the Masters. You just don't know what will happen. That's what I think. What makes it quite exciting. I'd actually disagree so, with that. Yeah. That's what you know. I think you kind of do. That's okay. kind of the, I think the odds with the Masters is is quite significantly different to other majors because from a stats point of view. Like, if you look at the last 12 Masters or the 14 Masters, I believe that only what we can say is wildcard who's won is Danny Willett, correct? I think everyone else has been yeah. into the low yeah. teens, 20s, maybe into the 30s for Masters because you have to be playing a certain level. Now, saying that, I understand that you can have sparks of brilliance from people who are amateurs and whatnot and... In, yeah, you know, and I'm trying to think of other people I can't at the top of my head, but people can perform well. But I think to put on that green yeah. jacket, I think you have to be performing a certain way. I don't think you can, yeah, pass especially consistently beforehand. Yeah, mm. but I guess the only anomaly that we have this year, again, the same as last year, really, <clears> is that we just don't know how good the live golfers are playing. We're saying Yaki Neiman is very good. His I think his form at the Masters has actually gotten better and still not amazing, but I think got has got better. Like yeah. I don't think you can hide away from the fact that he shot fifty nine. That doesn't mean oh is he playing well or not. Mm-hmm. He's playing unbelievably well, one of the best golfers in the world. But when it goes onto the big stage, yeah. what's that going to equate to when it's seventy two holes with the best golfers in the world? I I'm, agree, I'm not yeah, too definitely. Sure. But I genuinely don't think as much as yeah. we have one little wild card, I don't think we're going to see anyone above the odds of 20 to 1 being put on the green jacket this um, this week. I think it's just mm-hmm. the weather's too perfect. The course is too pristine. <clears throat> people are playing so consistently. Yeah. I could come back with the tail between my legs on Tuesday because we've seen so many winners so far on the PJ Tour at 200 to 400 to 1 this season. I just think all yeah. that's a completely different kettle to fish. So kettle of fish, not yeah, kettle to fish. Kettle of fish. So we'll, <laughs> we'll find so, out next week when I come back. Happy yourself. Yeah. Do you think then that we'll have a new winner, or do you think it will be a past winner? Good question. Uh, what's what's everyone's thoughts? Do we, 
I don't think it would be I wrong. Think... As we said, it's so difficult to win back to back. But mm-hmm. I think I, I think don't. I think be, the whole um... notion of well, your name, Johnny. You mentioned Lud- Ludwig Oberg or Oberg, how you say his name. Um, I don't mm. think Ludwig first, Oberg. I think I don't think mm. first time we'll just be able to trump people such as Scotty because just of how severe some of the, the greens are, just the course itself. I think you need a good mm-hmm. one or two playing there to understand how much of like how much it messes with your head. Uh, that's what everyone says when they go and see it in person. They're like, you don't understand how it looks on TV or how it actually is in person. So people like that, yeah. Wyndham Clark, you've obviously been playing very well. I think it'll be someone with experience. But then again, we can look into the live golfers like DJ, as, we, as Andy mentioned already, like he could really be a good pick. It's just they haven't really done anything for the last six months or so. But is that because they're just yeah. there getting drunk at live and having a good time sipping on pina coladas? Or is it because they aren't very good anymore? What an accusation, yeah. Alex. Yeah, so this will be the big test. <laughs> hey, oh, I, you know what? I, that's exactly what, what I'd do you want to be doing, doing Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I love a pina colada. Yeah, exactly. One person we haven't really mentioned, which I feel like we have to going into the into the Masters, is the big cat himself. There's been no talk about what he's going to do, and he would obviously be mm. a hot, hot topic on Thursday and Friday, and maybe not Saturday and Sunday, depending how he plays. Um, well, let me go to you. Uh, do you think? He'll make the cut. I mean, let's put it this way. I mean, Will Zalatoris went had a practice round with him yesterday and he outdrove him a few times and he said he was in good form. But we hear about this every year. We hear mm-hmm. about, oh, every tournament Tiger goes to, all the practice rounds. Oh, he's, like, he's in such good form. He's playing that he's hitting the ball really well. And then it comes to the first day. He, he, has, he has some good shots, don't get me wrong. But then, it, honestly, if he withdraws uh, any time during this, during this tournament, I think it's safe to say that it's the end of Tiger. Like, that's it. Done. It's a shame because how good it would be for him to, to come back. For him to wear Sunday red on a Sunday would be iconic. Uh, but it's, it's, such, it's such a shame. But I think, I mean, he's had, he's had like one of the best careers of any sportsman. Um, he, is, he is the GOAT, but I think it's... If this is it, if this is it now, it's that's it. It's done. It's, it's, that's what I personally think. As if it's over already. How sad. How sad indeed. I don't want to talk like that, but it's just he builds your hopes up. You hear about all this, all the hype throughout the week about how well he's playing, and it's true. Yeah, he he does play well, but it's not his playing. I think it's more just how he's navigating the course, uh, like not being out. It's just yeah. I I'd love to see him make it through to the weekend, even even if like even just to make the cut. Regardless of what position he comes in, just him to make the cut would be would be insane, mm-hmm. and it would be talked about for a long time. But yeah, I've just I'm just worried that one more withdrawal and people are just going to just lose faith. Unfortunately, but yeah, okay. I don't know, I'd love to hear your guys like your your guys' picks on it. Yeah, Johnny, think, I'll come uh... to you here in terms of what um what you think. I know he's not been having sex in preparation for the Masters as well. <laughs> <laughs> do you tell me, Johnny? Okay. What do you Who think? does, mate? Who does? Uh, I think <laughs> that I think the biggest issue for him is just that how difficult Mark Augusta is to walk. Um, yeah. I think if he was able to just stand up on the range and hit the shots he was required to hit, then he'd probably be able to do it. But the nature of the hills and the slopes. Yeah. And the uneven lies you get around there, um, I think, is just going to be too tricky for him. We spoke to I spoke to Butch earlier this week, and he was saying that last year when he was watching Tiger, he kind of didn't really want him to make the cut because he didn't think he could walk thirty six more holes. And as we all know, he kind of withdrew after seven holes of his third round. Um, so, I mean, if I've learned anything from watching Tiger Woods highlight reels of 2019, 2019 Masters win, is that you should never on camera say that he's done and he's going to retire because it could come back to bite you in the ass. But I think if we yes. do have another mm-hmm. withdrawal that is due to his ankle injury, then we're kind of, I think we're in the closing stages of his career, undoubtedly. Um, it would be interesting if that does happen, whether he decides to kind of call it a day at Augusta, be quite quite a good place to do it, <laughs> whether he tries to maybe make one of the other majors this year. But um, I think we're definitely nearing the end game. Yeah. Um, but interestingly, I, I thought it was weird that when he withdrew from the Genesis, it was because of flu or dehydration, not to do with his injury. Yeah. But yeah, he hasn't played between then and now. Um, Paul McGinley, yeah. who's also yeah. spoke to him, he was very surprised he hasn't got at least one or two other tournaments under his belt, which I thought was 
also interesting whether or not there's something else going on behind the scenes that we're we don't know whether flu and dehydration was a, a handy excuse to get, get out of walking the second two rounds at Riviera mm-hmm. Country Club. Who knows? But, serious uh, preparation for the Masters. Serious maybe. preparation for the Masters. Yeah, he's just been putting at his <laughs> house in Jupiter, Florida for the last three months. Um, but I'm, I'm, I have to say, I'm not as excited about Tiger making an appearance at Augusta this year as I have been the previous years. Mm-hmm. I think. I think it's kind of yeah. my focus is elsewhere. If he has a good two days, makes a cut, great. But I, I just can't see him competing, to be honest. I, I agree. And Andy, what do you think? You're in the same boat here about Tiger. Um, yeah, pretty much. Um, I think yeah, it's good to see he's looking happy. He's looking pretty chirpy in the last couple of days in the practice rounds. Obviously, that's good. Like what Will's saying about obviously. He's Seems like he's out driving Zalatoris and stuff. So his driving's obviously in good shape. Um, I th- I think he's just been patient with it because he knows, like Johnny said, he knows Augusta's such a such a test in terms of the walk. It's it's very hilly, and maybe people don't really see that on on the TV just how hilly it really is. Um, you know, a lot of people thought he would play Arnold Palmer like he would normally do after the Genesis. Didn't happen. Then we all thought he'd play in the Players. It didn't happen. He's he's clearly saved himself for this. Um, you know, he, he's going for, um, was it the most consecutive cuts at the Masters this week? Um, he's currently got the record with Gary Player and Fred Couples. So that's probably, well, is it on his mind? I don't know. Will he, will he want to be remembered for having 24 consecutive cuts at the Masters? A record that probably will never be beaten. Be nice to have, but it's probably not at the forefront of his mind. Um, will he make the cut? I think he will. Yeah, I think I'm actually quite confident he'll make the cut he knows Augusta like the back of his hand I think you know he, he hasn't played for nearly two months he he should be he said his ankle wasn't a problem at the Genesis he said you know we are all right he's he, he's always going to have issues with his ankle um mm-hmm. but he said it wasn't a problem he said he wasn't feeling anything if that is the case then we'll see this week this will be the biggest test for for him as in um you know as a, as a walk um I think if he gets mm-hmm. around Okay, I think he'll make the cut. At the end of the day, he's only got to beat a lot of, you know, old hackers with all due respect, old former Masters winners and a couple of amateurs. I think he can easily make the cut. Uh, He finished 32nd Mm -hmm. last year, was it? And he didn't really play well at all. Um, Obviously, obviously going for the consecutive cut streak, which which would be a nice, um, nice way to bow out if this is, you know, if this is to be his last Masters. Um. Is he going to win? No, absolutely no chance. Is he going to be a top 10? No, not for me. Um, I don't think he'll finish top 20. I think top 30 would be a great achievement for him, given everything he's been through. Yeah. I think the guys at the top of it, like you know, like you've been saying, the guys are too strong up front. Um, with all due respect, 2019, a lot of them saw his name on the leaderboard and um, all got a bit scared, I think that was fair to say. Um, mm. And, you know, he didn't have a uh, a car crash like he did. Uh, recently um so you know it's it's a, it's great to have him back let's put, let's put it that way uh like johnny yeah. said i don't really get you know it, it's nice to have him here but at the end of the day we all really know in our heart of hearts that he isn't going to win he isn't going to contend mm-hmm. well, I don't, 125 to 1 i can't really see that happening i i, I more than anyone would love to see tiger walking down that though in sunday red and the sunday with a one shot lead over rory McIlroy, something <laughs> like that you know but Think it can make a grown man cry, Alex. It would indeed. I think it would make every single person who's watching this podcast and also been part of this podcast shed a very manly or womanly tear because it would be something that we all want to see. But, I mean, from, right what, now. what would you guys prefer to see? Would you guys prefer to see Tiger in contention? I wouldn't say winning. Or would you prefer to see Rory finally uh, getting that green jacket after a long, long amount wow. of time? What would, what would tug on your heart? That is a fantastic, that's a fantastic question. Rory. Rory, I think it's fairly thing. easy to be honest. Yeah, yeah. So I think it has. I think to Tiger's be. had his. Yeah, Tiger's had his. I think it's time for Rory. Yeah. yeah. Twenty nineteen yeah, was he's had his time to shine. I think it, it would mean, and it would mean so much to Rory. Could you imagine just the emotion that would flood in if, he, if he was the one to really? Uh, considering I put thirty pound on ten to one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I think it would just be the <laughs> the vibes would be would be high um and it just i think it's, it's it, he's definitely due it uh obviously everyone loves tiger um but just just to have rory up there 
I think he deserves it this year. Um, so who knows? We'll, we'll see. Well, think, looking, yeah. well, we're all looking forward to it. I think we touched upon past experiences mm-hmm. of the Masters. Let's go around and we talk about our favourite Masters moment ever. And this can be as controversial <laughs> as you like. It could be Tiger and his illegal drop, I believe, in 2015. I could be wrong which day that was. It mm-hmm. could be something amazing. Andy, what is your favourite Masters moment from recent years? Have you either watched or just, just to highlight that yeah. sticks out for you? I'd say, I don't know whether it's my favourite memory but it's probably it, it it was my first mark i'll go back to my first masters because that really drew me in and i'm showing me age here in front of you boys but 96 was my first masters that i watched um nick faldo wow. uh okay. taking out norman on the on the in the final round you know that that really drew me into the game that i just sat there in front of that watching it with my granddad who was a massive nick faldo fan um I think Faldo shot a 67, Norman shot a 78. Huge, huge swing in the final round. Norman just collapsed, really, going to the back nine. And but Faldo, I just, all I remember was just Faldo playing so solid um, and just looking into the eyes of Norman and, and absolutely just taking him out. It was um, it was incredible. But, you know, that that drew me into the sport. And, and so that, for me, was my sort of main master's memory. Obviously, you know, you've got the 2019 Tiger Achievement was unbelievable. I don't think anyone really expected that to happen. So as you say, we can never write him off. Um, that you know that was unbelievable. I remember the Tiger chip in like we all do in in two thousand and five. That was, in your life, yes, incredible. Uh, Commentary was just <laughs> unbelievable. I still get chills watching that. I'm like, that's yeah. that was more than mine. But yeah, that's yeah. Just still you know, I I think the. That I mean, that was an unreal shot. To me, the best shot that's ever been played at the Masters was Bubba's hooked wedge. Um, yeah. Given the moment, you know, he had to hit the shot uh, in the playoff with uh, Ustazen. I also had money on him that week, a sixty-six to one. I do remember that. Um, so that that was that was um, just just an incredible hook wedge from what was it, just over a hundred yards to do that takes a lot of skill. Um, my most agonising moment, I'll just throw that in there. You know, lifelong Come Ernie on. Els fan. Um, you know, I've, I've I've watched, sat through so many agonising moments for Ernie throughout the years. Obviously, he did win four majors, two US Opens and two Opens. Could never win the PGA. Didn't really come close. Had a couple of chances there. But the Masters was the one that he was always there or thereabouts. And I remember, was it 2004? Um Mickelson holding a birdie putt inside 20 feet to deny him a chance in a playoff. That to me, you know, Ernie was my hero as a kid and I just would have loved to have seen him win the Masters. And I remember being just absolutely distraught. Probably haven't been that distraught since Aguero scored in the last minute to deny United the title. That was kind of one of those moments where just sat in front of the screen, just like head in hands, like, oh my God. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that, those would be mine. Yeah. Um, okay, they were a good one. I like, I like them. Yeah. I like including that distraught moment as well. Johnny, I'll go to you. What is your uh, master's yeah. moment and uh, master's misery? Um, so I, was, I wasn't actually around or alive yet to see Larry Mize hole out from like 100 yards to win the Masters and beat Greg Norman. Um, but they play yes. that over and over and over again. And I just think as he Larry Mize was like grew up around Augusta, that is arguably one of the coolest like masters moments and his celebration is epic and he beat Greg Norman. Um, so that is, that is one that literally just came into my mind. Um, but I, the ones that I'd kind of taken notes down when Tiger took a 10 on 12 in 2020, <laughs> and then it wasn't, the, it wasn't the 10 that was epic, but it was how he bounced back from that bounced and back. birdied yeah. almost every single hole on his way in bottom one, mm-hmm. I think. I think it was just kind of like yeah, a testament yeah. to his like mental toughness because that must have been so embarrassing for Tiger and the fact that he did that and yeah. then was just like right well game's not over round's not finished got to make the most of this and just dug in and just ground it out I thought was pretty mega and it was kind of testament to his kind of mentality and how he never never gives up on a round of golf so I thought that was cool um Mickelson's shot from the pine needles it's just like maybe the best golf shot. shot I ain't got there with Bubba's hooked wedge is like probably the best shot to have ever been played at Augusta National. Um, 
yeah, on the 13th in 2010. That was just, I remember watching that on TV and just being kind of like blown away by the skill level involved to pull off a shot like that. I think it was a six iron from about 200 yards. Um, and then for just pure drama, um, sorry, I'm kind of hogging moments here, um, but Spieth okay. just <laughs> blowing up. He's blowing up was just wild. And the fact that Willett went on to win it, I mean, that was actually before I kind of really fell in love with Spieth. Um, and I actually wanted him to lose then, but I actually love him now. I like that whole kind of roller coaster wow. of losing his game has really kind of endeared him, endeared him to me. Um, but yeah, seeing him just kind of implode in the 12th <clears> was really like just madness. And all that is just that is what you want from the Masters some kind of drama going around him and corner. Yeah, drama and excitement. Exactly. Yes. I, I agree. A good list. Well, right, you, Masters moment of misery for me. Uh, yeah, so, uh, I mean, I've got a couple of, like, great moments. Obviously, Tiger's chipping on 16, as Andy brought up, like, the commentary. Um, he, every time I watch that, you just get chills, don't you? You're just like, it's just everything about it. And it's the perfect ad for Nike as well. The way the ball rolls, you see the Nike swoosh and it drops in. It's like, <clears throat> it's, excuse me, it's just, like, unbelievable. Um, so, I mean, that was, that's obviously class. Uh, another one is during the par three contest. Uh, Jack Nicholas' grandson holes in holes in one of the final hole, and just watching it, it's just insane. Everyone's cheering, everyone's it's just it's great, fantastic swing. But yeah, holding one from his grandson while Gary Player is all watching, it's just it's just pretty incredible, pretty incredible to watch. Um, even John Rahm skim over the ball, like it wasn't really an audience, oh, yeah. audience, but he like skims the ball over the water and he holds it in, and it's weird because there's no crowd, it's just. You just hear like really shy, yeah, and he's just there going cool. And it's like if that wasn't on camera, you would not believe it even happened. So that was pretty incredible. Um, I would say disastrous moment, or should we say meltdown? Rory's twenty eleven, um, where he was obviously leading, and everything just went completely pear shaped. Uh, this is what we mean by redemption. Like this is why I think he really deserves that green jacket. Um, so I reckon, yeah, after that uh, disastrous display, well, I mean, he obviously got into his head and it all, as soon as one thing goes wrong, everything else goes wrong. And going from leading into the last day to end up tying 15th and finishing the last round on an 80 is, yeah, that is, if that's not what a meltdown is, I don't know what is. That's tough. But, no, I think... Uh, you talking about it, it's an absolutely horrible thing to remember. I think a lot of us have blocked out <laughs> of our memory. Especially yeah. Rory. yeah, true. That's what I mean. This is why we, we, Rory's been brought up a few times in this podcast. So I think to have him up there uh, would be would be great for all of us. Completely I agree. That's, uh, agree. My old pre- Go on, Alex, why don't you finish up with... Yeah, I'll keep it short and sweet. So my uh, euphoric Masters moment would definitely be 2019 in Tiger. I was there. Uh, just getting back into golf through uh, from university at that point, and I remember watching it like a little twelve-year-old kid in my bedroom. And I think the day afterwards, I went and bought say a Scotty Cameron Newport, sort of a random person's on Facebook Marketplace. And to this day, I'm certain it's fake, but you know, Tiger, Tiger was using one. I wanted to use one. Uh, didn't help my passing, but maybe that's not the Scotty's fault. It's probably my own. Um, but that was just one thing that, like, I wasn't emotional, but, you know, you really did feel the energy from the crowd, from Tiger. The mm. fact he didn't blubber like an idiot at the end was quite disappointing. I expected him to cry like a baby, but I think he was more, you know, tuned in than than, uh, than I was. Uh, but that was incredible, and I think everyone on this podcast will agree. Um, my master's misery is more mm-hmm. from a personal level, and it was actually last year with Brooks against Ram when he had a four-shot lead because I – probably would have won about two to three months of rent if Brooks did win and did at one stage was just holding everything four or five shot lead the heavens opened everyone said oh now it's I think Brooks had a par part on the hole in which he was going to uh, restart on and I think Ram had a birdie part two shot swing within the first 10 seconds down to two I looked at my friends we said some rude words and then, you know, the race was run and he wasn't even close after that. So that was pretty upsetting. Obviously bounced back at the PGA, but uh, there's a lot of misery. We could say a lot of meltdowns. We've covered it all on this podcast and we do hope that the Masters itself will have a lot of fireworks. Obviously, we are all looking towards Scotty Scheffler. The main thing is we want the tournament to be as fun as possible for the players and also for all of our viewers. Self. 
Any more for any more? Hopefully, no more crying from you, Alex. Magic. Yeah. I just want to sign Hopefully off. No more crying from you. That would be that would be fantastic. Yeah. The only thing I want to sign off by saying is, if anyone wants to analyze Alex's bet, go and have a look at Corey Connors' putting stats on the PGA Tour for a, for a good laugh. <laughs> <laughs> is it bad? <laughs> He's almost dead last in every single putting stat on the PJ Tour. <laughs> right, so on that note, guys, thank you very much for watching the Bar uh, 4 podcast presented by Golf Magic. Obviously, we're here for good times, not good selections, judging by that woeful pick by me, but his strokes gained is very good. So maybe I am a biased. Yeah, I, I had a look at him. I did have a look at him. I was tempted because he's he's a good player, but I, as soon as I went onto his buying page on the PJ Tour, I was uh, yeah horrified. I didn't realise he was a bad, such a bad player. Mate, anything, anything could happen, mate. Anything yeah. could happen. Let's just Who knows? That. I think we do know with Corey, but you never know. If he's there, I'm going to have a very happy face on next week. So, guys, stay tuned. Colin. <laughs> Colin. <laughs> Bye. So we've got a lot of fun things coming up on golfmagic.com as well. We've got a brand new website. Andy, do you want to talk about that very briefly? Yeah, brand new website went live uh, last week. Looks fantastic. Um, We've got a live uh, master's blog commentary uh, on the website um, from Thursday through to the final round on Sunday. So, um, yeah, we'll have all the news alerts, all the latest interviews, um, really from right the way through from today when the guys are in the media centre. Um, so yeah, just really looking forward to it. As I said at the start of the show, just this is this is my favourite um, major of the season, closely followed by the Open. Um, and yeah, I just hope everyone's really, I hope our uh, listeners are really um, looking forward to this week. I think it's going to be a, a brilliant Masters, and Scotty Sheffield's going to uh, going to win his second green jacket in three years. I agree with everything you're saying there. I think he will. And I think everyone to tune into the website and the live blog as well. We've got some really good things coming up, especially on socials too. We've had some videos come out with the likes of Charlie Hull and Lexi Thompson. And we will be filming a lot more club reviews Mm -hmm. in the next few weeks and months. So make sure you follow all of our socials and bookmark our wonderful golfmoney.com website to keep up to date with all of our golf news going forwards. That is it for the first episode of the Par 4 podcast presented by Golf Magic. Make sure you tune to the next one because there will be a lot of conversation about, well, who's won money, who's lost money, and how we can bet to improve and chase our losses, which is exactly what you should do with hypothetical £50. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for coming in today, and we'll see you all at the next one.